Okay, so now let's talk about how to make our registration form a bit more secure. Um, for starters, we want to find out if the user submitted everything we want them to. And we can use this using a function called empty. And this will basically tell us if the, if the thing is empty, it'll return true. So if empty post username, if they did not submit a username. Uh, but first, here's something that I recommend for pretty much anything where you need to do error checking is make errors a variable, make it an array, but make it an empty array like that. And then you can add stuff onto it, and you can add multiple errors to it in case you need to. So now we can uh, say we can use a function called array underscore push. And that will basically say at the end of an array, I want to add a new item on. First, we have to tell which array we want, even though there's only one right now. We want to add two errors, and we want to tell them you did not submit a username. Okay, uh, close your parentheses, semicolon, and end that. Now let's do the same thing for the email and the, and I guess their password, because that's the only other thing that, uh, I, I wouldn't recommend making a website required because not many everyone has a website, and we actually want that password one, sorry. Okay, that was the easy part. Now, how do we get something out of a database to see if it's already been used? Well, what we can do is, I'm just going to copy this over. Take a look at this. I'm setting a variable to old username, and that is a MySQL query. I want to select ID. I didn't do select all because really I don't need to select anything. I don't care about any information. I just want to find out how many there are. So we select ID from users where their name equals the username that the user gave us. Now notice, I ended the quote there, then put a dot. Now that basically means tack this on to whatever is previous. So basically this will evaluate out to where name equals, in single quotes, whatever the user posted as a username. And I said limit one. Remember I talked about limits before? Basically this is saying I only, if there is, a, now this, in theory this shouldn't happen, but in the event that there is more than one user with the same name and we get two, that doesn't matter because I only care if there's more than zero. And so if there is more than zero, we will say this username is already registered. Put that on to our array. Now notice here I said MySQL num rows. And that basically tells us how many rows were returned. And that is why I said limit one. So you'll either get a zero or a one one if it's already registered, zero if it's not. And so I said if it's greater than zero, it will push that error. So now we can do the same thing with the email. And I did the same thing. Select ID from users where the email equals the email they posted, limit one. And that's basically the same code. Now there's one other thing, and this doesn't, uh, this won't bother us, this is for the user's sake, is that if the password that they gave us in password 1 is not equal to the password that they gave us in password 2 then that's a problem because we won't know which password they want so let's say if post password 1 is not the exclamation mark means not and equal to means equal to it's not equal to post password 2 password 2 then we can put onto our array array push errors we want to tell them you enter two different passwords now notice here up in the when I was checking to see what was empty I only checked password one and that's because if password two is empty then it wouldn't obviously be equal to password one and so it would throw this error but if password 2 and password 1 are empty, then they would be equal, so we wouldn't get two different passwords, but we would get that you did not submit a password. So you don't need to check password 2 to see if it's, uh, to see if there's a password in it. Okay, so now we've gotten our errors ready, so we can tell the user what's wrong, but right now, it will still go through. So let's change that. And we want to say, if size of, and that will tell me how many things I have on the errors array. 
I may have one or two or a lot. So we say the size of errors, just basically if it's greater than zero, actually no, I want to say if it's equal to zero, because that's only if it's equal to zero that I want it to, uh, I'm sorry, if it's equal to zero, then I want it to go out, to, then I want it to query it, because only then will we have no errors and everything will be fine. Now, right now, if there are errors, it won't go through, and that's good. However, it also doesn't tell the user if there are any errors or what's wrong, so, and that's no good. So let's go down here to our body section, and let's add some PHP tags here. And remember, you can add as many of these to your page as you want. It doesn't matter. So let's go introduce a new function called for each. That's one word. And the nice thing about uh, something like Notepad++ is it tells you some of the syntax that it would use. So we want to use array expression is errors. That's our array. And we want to do as. Let's just, and we set each variable. As it goes through the errors array, it will set that piece of the array as a variable. So we can set it to E. And now we can, and this is a function, so it has tags, uh, curly braces. So let's just say we want to echo E because that is a full, that is a regular piece of text that's not an array, the E variable. And then let's just afterwards, let's say echo BR just so that the variables aren't all in one line and break it up. Okay, so now we should have everything set. However, there's one more thing I'd like to do before we test this out. And this is mainly to prevent any hacking attacks or just users making a mistake. See, an ap one of these single quotes or apostrophes, I guess you would call it, that will tell it when the end of a value is. For example, so the first quote begins the username value, the second quote ends the username value. Now, if the user tries to enter a quote in their name or their email or their password for whatever reason, that will screw up our query and it won't work. We'll get a MySQL error. So what we can do is what's called... I'm actually going to have to look up that function. HTML entities. I'm sorry about that. That's just copied from another project of mine. So for stars, we want to go HTML entities. And this will convert any characters that are no good to a HTML character. So the apostrophe will con be converted to ampersand, number, whatever it is. Then after first value is the thing we want to convert. And then afterwards, we're going to do end quotes, which will also convert the quotes. Other and you have to have that in there. Otherwise, it may not do that by on its own. So we want that to username, pass, username, email, website, and password. So just uh, be careful about this. Be sure you apply it to everything you do, even even if it's not database queries. It never hurts to have this. So now everything should be safe to run. So let's try our register.php file. Now see, nothing happens because I didn't submit anything. So let's register. I'm using just password as the password. Whenever you're testing something on your hard drive, don't make it something easy. Do make it something easy that you can use. Now, here's something I forgot, and this is that it doesn't do anything once you have registered. And I'm going to cover that a bit in our next video. However, if we go to our users table and we click browse, you can see that it is there. All all the information is. So, I'll see you next video.